Greetings from Three Edge Asset Management and welcome to our weekly edition of the Three Edge Weekend Review for the week of September 21st. I'm Fritz Folds, the Chief Investment Strategist here at Three Edge, and I'm pleased to be joined here once again today by Steve Cucchiaro, President and Chief Investment Officer of Three Edge Asset Management. As we do each week, Steve and I will be taking a look at the most recent activity in the global capital markets and providing what we hope will be insights to better understand the current market environment. We certainly have a lot to cover today, so let's get started and let's talk about the markets. So Steve, global equities have certainly been pressure so far in the month of September. So non-US equities in general have held up better than US equities have this month. What do you believe helps explain the selling pressure in equities thus far in the month? Well, Fritz, there are several uh, possibilities that help cause the equity correction so far that we've seen this month. One is by the end of August, we saw some definitive signs of a stock market bubble that was perhaps ready to burst. We saw rampant speculation. We had IPOs, initial public offerings that had huge demand. We had uh, novice uh, amateur investors speculating the market for the first time. We had uh, so many people buying call options, meaning that they were betting on the market rising, that in a very rare instance, we had the price of calls more expensive than the price of puts or, or protecting the market. So those are all signs of rampant speculation. Uh, secondly, there was disappointment with the recent uh, Fed announcement and Fed meeting. And like you often say, Fritz, sometimes the market acts as a spoiled brat and it goes through a tantrum. And, and the market always wants more and more artificial stimulus. And so while the Fed reiterated that they were going to keep interest rates very, very low for the foreseeable future, that wasn't enough, it seems, for the market. The market was hoping for some additional sign, definitive sign that they were going to print more money right away, and that wasn't in the cards. Third, uh, there's now a prospect of a further delay in the next fiscal stimulus package or where the government agrees to spend money to help uh, create a bridge for people who are unemployed or people who are struggling with uh, small businesses, et cetera. Uh, fourth, we've had a resurgence of COVID in uh, many parts of Europe and a little bit in the US as well. And that's basically unexpected. We believe that the market assumes that we've seen the worst of COVID, that it's declining now, it'll keep declining till we have a vaccine. And uh, there are a lot of, there's school of thought that, that that's what, what is hoped to have happened, but the evidence is saying otherwise. And then fifth, you'd have to say that as we get closer to the election, there's more and more concern about chaos around and after the election time. Excellent. So let's talk briefly about gold, which, as we know, is up over 20 percent year to day. However, it struggled a bit lately. Uh, what would be your uh, reasons for gold struggling uh, in the in the recent past here? And does it remain an attractive long term holding in a globally diversified multi asset class portfolio? Well, it is true that in the last few days, gold has struggled and we've had a correction and it's very much tied to the fact that the US dollar, which had been weaker, all of a sudden strengthened. And because gold is priced in dollars, often short-term traders have a knee-jerk reaction when they see the dollar going up, they, they rush to sell their gold. But if you think about it, the dollar rose because the dollar index, which is a basket of currencies, uh, the, the dollar within that basket of currencies rose. But if you look at that basket, it's the, the vast majority of that basket is the euro. And really what happened was, as problems started to hit the European region, starting with some of the COVID resurfacing and the people worried about economic growth slowing there, that knocked the value down on the euro. That lifted the gold index up. People saw the gold index up and sold gold. But we think of it much less as, as the dollar strengthening and much more as the euro weakening. So we think it's a short-term phenomenon. The Fed has repeated a commitment to having interest rates near zero for many years. And when you have near zero rates, your currency shouldn't be perceived as, as extra strong when you can't even earn the rate of inflation by holding the currency. Also, what we know longer term is that the US government debt is growing to record levels and much faster than underlying growth. So that means it's very likely that sooner or later, the Fed will have to print more money and that's going to be uh, a big support for gold going higher in the future. One other thing I'd mention is that Markets go through different phases of the cycle. And 
the phase that benefits gold is monetary inflation, currency devaluation, and geopolitical uncertainty. And unless you believe that looking ahead, we're not going to have any more monetary inflation or Fed printing, we're not going to have any currency devaluation, we're not going to have any geopolitical uncertainty, you should feel uncomfortable unless you had gold in your portfolio. Excellent. And so my next question, um, it seems like most conversations about the market these days end up coming back to the Federal Reserve and their unprecedented response to the COVID-19 pandemic and the economic fallout that followed. So, of course, one problem is that the liquidity from easy monetary policy too often seems to end up increasing the value of financial assets and not helping the real economy. Can you talk a little bit about something that we hear uh, from time to time, which is the idea that, oh, the Fed is pushing on a string? Uh, have we reached that point where the Fed uh, is going to have diminishing returns in terms of uh, additional monetary policy? Yeah, and this is a, a pretty difficult concept to grasp, but I'm going to try my best to explain our perspective. When the Fed prints money, what they're actually doing is they're clicking on a computer and, and out of thin air creating reserves. And those reserves can either be used for lending or they can be used to buy assets, which are basically treasury bills and bonds and so on they put on the balance sheet. So that creates a lot of pressure for, you could say, asset inflation or financial inflation. But they're not legally allowed to spend. So they're trying desperately right now, and they're sending every signal they can to try to pass the baton to the government. And fiscal spending means government spending. And they're saying, look, Congress, get together and start you know, taking advantage of the money we're creating and, and start spending this money and getting it into the hands of the people and the small businesses that really need it. So if that doesn't happen, then all the work they're doing doesn't get transmitted to the real economy. It stays in the financial economy. And that's why I think it is valid to say, in terms of trying to boost the real economy, they'd be pushing on a string until we get this next baton passed to the fiscal spending. Excellent. So now I, let's just um, that of the IHME, you're on that board. And I was wondering if you had any updates for us in terms of COVID-19, particularly now that we're going to enter into the fall and winter flu seasons. Well, I've got some bad news about our latest forecast that just came out and some relatively good news. So let me start with the bad news. Bad news is that the base projection, not the best case or the worst case, but the, the base case, is that between now and January 1st, deaths in the U.S. are going to go from the current 200,000 level to 350,000. And that's that's terrible. And uh, the problems won't just be in the U.S., but uh, the U.S. could get hit hard. But I want to point out right away that more than ever, there's a big disagreement between the major models that are forecasting the coronavirus. Most of the other models, and perhaps this is what the market expects, is that we've seen the worst of the coronavirus. The coronavirus is going to decline from here and, and trend towards zero. Then we'll have a vaccine and everything will be good again. That is the majority of the forecasts that are out there. The IHME takes big issue with that. We have uh, increasing amount of evidence by studying countries all around the world that there is a strong seasonality component to the coronavirus and that the seasonality is tied to the pneumonia cycle. And right now, we've just seen the very best, most favorable, lowest part of the cycle. And now going into October, November, December, January, all the way to February, we're going to see the increasingly the worst part of the cycle. So we do expect a resurgence of coronavirus. We're already seeing signs that it's happening in Europe quite unexpectedly. And we fear that uh, that'll be followed by increasing cases in the U.S. Now, I did mention there was some good news. And the good news is that the deaths per case are going down. And there could be two reasons for this. One is that doctors in the medical community, through increased knowledge about how to treat the coronavirus, are doing a better job with, with that knowledge. And then secondly, there's some evidence that as the coronavirus mutates, it's mutating in a way that's just as contagious as ever, but uh, less lethal. All right, wow, okay, thank you for that. And so let's just wrap things up by getting just a very brief summary about what our outlook is at this point and how we're positioned. So right now, uh, 
we still have a healthy allocation to equities. But early this month, we uh, brought down our allocation in US equities. We've uh, taken away our allocation in European equities, but we maintain our allocation to Asian equities. And in the US, we feel that's the most overvalued market. Uh, we do acknowledge that if we do get a big uh, fiscal package that happens earlier than normal and the Fed decides they want to backstop that by printing more money, this could be another short-term boost to the U.S. market. So we want to leave that option open. But, but for now, we see the U.S. as the most overvalued market. We've seen increasing signs of uh, decline in uh, economic performance and uh, valuation, et cetera, in Europe. And I think some of this is driven by the resurgence of coronavirus there. So we're happy we pulled back in Europe. Uh, Asia, frankly, has done the best job managing the coronavirus. Uh, Asia, uh, mostly East Asia, we're, we're talking about, including Japan. And so we're happy to stay invested there for now. Uh, with bonds, we're still at the point where the entire Treasury yield curve from three-month Treasury bills all the way to 30-year Treasury bonds, all yields less than inflation. And to us, that's not a great deal for an investor unless we get into deflation at some point. Also, for bonds that are issued by corporations, credit spreads are so narrow, we don't think investors in corporate bonds are being, being compensated fairly for the risk that they're taking, especially if the economy slows down in the future. So we're shying away from that. Uh, we still uh, think gold is a great asset to own long term. And, and as we pointed out earlier, it might struggle in the short term, but uh, we think of gold as a currency that should hold its value relative to paper currencies. And then commodities are tricky because from a valuation viewpoint, commodities are highly undervalued relative to other asset classes. However, if we do have a resurgence of coronavirus, the global economy slows down again, then we might have to be more patient and wait before we expect commodities to appreciate. Excellent. Very good. Thank you for that. So that will do it for us. Steve and I will be back again next week with another edition of the Three Edge Week in Review. Remember, all of our videos are available on our YouTube channel. And feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you'll receive notification as we release videos in the future. And always feel free to share our videos with anyone who you think could benefit from them. So on behalf of Steve and everyone at 3 Edge Asset Management, we urge everyone to remain safe and healthy as we approach the fall flu season. Steve, thank you again for your valuable insight. Thank you, Fritz. And thanks for listening.